We sent a tank through central London to deliver pizza to Domino's. Being realistic, I think we can get to four or five hundred stores. Last week, we sold 2.5% for half a million. Would 50 million buy it right now? Yeah, 50 would. We've just signed a lease on a shop in Dubai. What made you want to put one in Dubai? Just an excuse for a holiday. <laughs> the only pizza place I know is Fireway, bro. What's going on guys? This video is sponsored by Louis. Some of you know him on Insta as Loads, one of the best Instagram names, let me tell you that. Guys, Louis has been building online businesses for the last five to 10 years and he has spent the last five years coaching others one-to-one -one on how to start businesses. Louis has got over 2,000 profitable testimonials and guys, let me be honest with you, I wouldn't let someone sponsor the show who I didn't vouch for. So trust me, it's legit. Literally, just go send him a DM on Instagram, it's at Loads. All you gotta do is say to him, I come from the Blue Tick Show, help me make some money. And I know most of these people out there scams and there's plenty of people out there offering you millions and millions of pounds and stuff like that. Louis is one of the 1% who actually do it properly. Legitly, you don't need nothing. All you literally need is a phone and Wi-Fi. Send him a message and leave the rest to him. Guys, and if you want to know why I'm sitting here pushing it so much, it's because realistically, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. And I know most people sit here and say this because they're getting some sort of commission for it and stuff like that, but I really ain't. I'm telling you as a good person, the host of the show, doing a nine to five ain't going to get you nowhere. So go message Louis, say you come from the boutique show, just ask Louis for the business model, let him do the explaining and let him explain to you how he can help you. I'll see you soon. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Blue Tick Show. Opposite me today, I've got Mario Aleppo. Some of you know him as the owner of Fireway Pizza, the fastest growing pizza chain. I'm sure it is now, no? Yeah, yeah, we got there in the end. <laughs> welcome to the show, my brother. How are you? <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Listen, this. firstly, I want to say thank you for coming on my show. Pleasure having you on here. Listen, you've smashed it. You have. We can't sit here and try and lie. You got, I asked your brother the other, earlier on, 157 stores. Yeah, 150, yeah, 157 now. You sit there and you ain't smiling about it. Come on, bro. No, I've been smiling. I've been smiling. But to be honest, it's um, it's only because it's happened so far. Sometimes it takes like a, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, what's the word? Sink in? Yeah, as much. Obviously it does, but because it's happened so fast, it doesn't sink in in the way that, you know, if it had been, if you had more time to kind of think about it. But yeah, no, it's, it's um, can't complain, it's gone well. Well, listen, I like to always throw it back to childhood on my podcasts. Talk to us about you when you were younger. What was your upbringing like? Where are you from? Um, originally from South London. My grandma came over from Italy, in the, um, from the Amalfi Coast near Naples. Um, but yeah, grew. I was born in London, grew up in London, South London, in Mitcham. Just an average guy, really. Um, didn't really have any money, but didn't really need any money at the time. Was just happy with like a few pounds to go to the chicken shop. That was about it. Um, yeah, so grew up in South London and pretty much been there ever since. Only recently I moved up. What was school like for you? I wasn't really a fan of school, to be honest. Um, just didn't really click with me. And I tried to... Well, I did bunk off as much as possible and just tried not to, you know, be a part of it. But after maybe primary school was all right because I had all my friends there, yeah. um, all my people around me. But then my mum sent me to a, a high school that was like far away and all my friends went to the local school. Um, I don't know why she sent me there. Maybe it was slightly better or, you know, she wanted me to try and focus. But yeah, it didn't really go well. I wasn't really a fan and just bunked off for as much as possible. Did you have dreams and ambitions as a kid? Mm, not as a kid, maybe as like a teenager guy. I, I kind of always knew or at least always thought that I would make money somehow. Because even in like school days, because I didn't, <clears throat> because I weren't a fan of school, I would um, pass the time just by selling sweets in the playground. You was one of them ones, yeah? Well, but what was you aspiring to be as a kid? Everyone has a dream, it's either a football player yeah, or... Yeah, first it was football, uh, football player. Probably because of the money, because to be honest, I weren't very good at football. And then when I realised that I weren't very good at football, I wanted to be a, a lawyer. And then when I realised I didn't have the, you know, um, educational kind of uh, intellect to do that, then basically um, the ambition kind of just disappeared if I'm honest, for a good like couple of years. I left school when I was 16 and then done a couple of college courses just to basically keep my mum happy. What was you studying? Uh, first I done 
public services, which is just a general thing, and then I just done B Tech Sport to try and do personal training. Okay. Um, but that was just to pass the time, really. I I went really after that, like footballer lawyer kind of stage disappeared. There wasn't really no sort of ambition. I don't know why. Maybe because I was making bits of money in school that that kind of made me put me into a comfort zone that I'll do something in the future and make some money. Um, and then time just started passing by. So obviously after school, you had to get a job. Yeah. What did you get? What was your first job? First ever job was a paper round um, at the local sweet shop. That was when I was still at school. After that, when I left college, I spent the next like couple of years just messing around, not really working, just messing around with friends, just hanging as as you do. Like if there's if 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 there's not much to do and you don't have any job opportunities or anything, um, next couple of years just messing around, wasting time, and then finally probably because my mum pushed me to get a job I got a couple of jobs one was a charity fundraiser on the street so that was actually quite well paid believe it or not um, really? yeah at the time it was about £13 an hour but it's because, good money even now yeah yeah exactly <laughs> but because obviously you have to sign people up that only lasted for a couple of months because you have to obviously hit the targets um, and then after that uh, I got a job in Nando's what was that like? Yeah, that was dead <laughs> that was dead um, but it was good at the same time because it gave me a little bit of um, like a structure you know um, getting up going to work yeah it weren't great the money weren't great and then ended up getting fired from that after about six or seven months what did you get fired for? just for not wearing the hat well, <laughs> I, I wasn't a fan wear, yeah, wear the hat didn't want to wear the hat and um, and you thought you'd rather lose your job than wear the hat well I didn't think I'd lose my job until I lost my job and then, <laughs> and then it was too late but um, yeah man that was that was when I was about 20 21 and then spent another year not really doing nothing then was involved in a car crash got some compensation money um, was it bad? it was you know um, one car I was driving down the main road and one old lady in a car came out the side road, knocked me in the side of my car, pushed me onto the other side of the road, and then another car coming the opposite way hit me head on. So oh, the car shit. was a write-off, and there was um, an off-duty policewoman who happened to be walking down the road, and for some strange reason, she you know, um, had it in her head, it was my fault. Well, and after they just licked straight into yeah, the front of you, it's your fault. My friend was sitting next to me in a car, and he had a beer in his hand. That went everywhere, so the whole car smelled of beer. I don't even drink mm. beer, but it didn't. It didn't look good. But anyway, um, ended up getting arrested for driving without due care and attention. Had to go to court. Had to represent myself because I didn't have any money to get a solicitor. And I ended up um, winning the case because I, I just explained obviously what happened, um, and they could see that it weren't my fault. So, so that happened. And what, then, they pay you out. At the time, it was it was all right. It was about four grand. Five That's big grand. money back then yeah, as well, yeah, right? Yeah, talking like seven, eight years ago from now. Maybe more. Nine years ago. And what did you do with that four or five grand? Probably about a grand of it I wasted. And the rest I kept hold of. And I put a grand into a coffee shop. So I opened a coffee shop in Tooting. Okay. Um, very, very small. Like half the size of this room. It was a part of another shop. So he just cut off a little section and rented it to me for like two bills a week 200 pound a week um and that failed within about six months coffee shop failed probably just because i weren't really interested it was just kind of a first time business um, what made you want to open a coffee shop i just looked at the shop that i found and looked at where it was near the train station and i thought a lot of people go past it in the morning but i'm not really an early morning person so <laughs> the shop get... didn't open till 10 a.m <laughs> yeah should have opened at six no a few times i got there early it was all right, but then my friends started hanging around outside. It just weren't really, it was nothing special, just a coffee shop. And it was nothing different about it, nothing special, no sort of real effort went into it. It was just, oh, I got my own business. What was your friendship circle like? It was good. Like I said, I had a good circle of friends in primary school. Then I went to secondary school, so I lost contact with all those friends. And then when I came, when, when um, I dropped out of, school and um, college when like a few years later then I, I um, reunited with all my friends because they still live local in like Mitcham so luckily yeah I was alright it was good, good good people around you yeah good people um, yeah good people like supportive people did they ever 
did they have dreams and ambitions? Were they trying to push you to open, like do something, or was it a bit more? Uh, you always got friends who have a party boys want to go out and party. Yeah, they were more party people. They're good people, but more party people. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. They're always in Ibiza, so <laughs> living good. Yeah. I, I hardly see them, but um, no, no, they, I had good people. I had a good support network around me. Yeah. yeah and yeah, after yeah. your coffee shop, what happened? What went wrong? Apart, like I said, it just went downhill. Um, weren't really too much passion. I think you got to have a lot. I think you got to have passion or at least be remotely interested in any kind of business that you Definitely. do because otherwise you're more than likely um to give up at some point so yeah gave up after like six months it weren't really working and then spent another year or two years even nearly just i'm in an hour in about what to do um then my grandmother passed away so she left me a bit of money with the money i'd saved up i probably had about 20 grand not a massive amount of money but I had about 20 grand um i had some pay slips so got a loan from hsbc for 25 grand so you had a nice little pot 45 yeah grand 45 grand it wasn't a massive amount but it was it was something you know um so i looked at what my options were and i was going to do a subway but then at the last minute changed my mind but at that time i already found a shop so i found a shop in sutton in south london and it was cheap it was like a grand a month it was a Chinese takeaway. It needed a lot of work doing to it, so I got it like cheap. Um, and I had some friends of mine, some Polish builders that lived in my house. So they agreed to just do the shop for me and I'll just pay them back monthly. So that saved me like a big chunk. I reckon that was about 40 grand as well. So they, that saved me a, a lot of an upfront cost. <clears throat> um, and then, yeah, didn't do the subway, but for, you know, I've got the shop, I've got to do something. So I kept the subway layout, but just, done pizza being Italian and uh, and that's it is that where Fireway was born yeah yeah where did the name come from Subway but with fire so I just changed the, fr- the first oh, bit oh for yeah. real is that so literally was, where yeah, it yeah. come from <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it was some you know um, starlight moment it was yeah that was it and obviously your concept is fast pizza yeah like I went in there about two weeks ago to pick up a pizza and I ordered it I turned around and he goes your pizza's ready yeah I looked at him, I just hand him up, I was like, bro, you sure it's cooked? Like, I'll, I'll be dead honest with you. I looked at him and I'm thinking, bro, that's just someone else's pizza. <laughs> I'm just me being honest with you, but it was instant. Yeah. They put it straight in, literally it goes one circle and it's mm-hmm. cooked. Was that concept put in place back then? Um, to be honest, we can do it in a 180 seconds, which is, sounds like a lot, which is a lot. Which is, I mean, which is, um, which is fast, which is very fast compared to the competition. But if you go to Italy... Like with the wood-fired ovens, you can get a pizza in like 60, 70 seconds. Yeah, because it's just mad hot in there, um, in the oven. So in the UK, it's, it's fast. It is fast in general, but compared to like some places in, in Italy and probably even some here, you can get a quicker pizza. But we've got that balance of, in my opinion, a restaurant standard product Yeah, that's good. in a fast food kind of atmosphere. So somewhere in the middle. Was you yourself working there? Yeah, yeah. I had no choice. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? It was good, but it was stressful. It was very stressful. I mean, I was the obviously the manager, the customer service assistant. You was everything. I was the driver, everything except the chef. I weren't the chef. You weren't cooking yourself? No, no, no. Do you know how to do it? Yeah, yeah, now I do, but at the time, um, yeah, no, I weren't the chef. So, bro, I've got to be honest with you. I obviously want to touch more on how that business was built, but yeah, you went from one store yeah. to 150 plus. Mm. In the space of how many years now? Six and a half. That's not a joke. Mm. Like, let's be honest now, in six years, that's what, 30 stores a year? Six, 12, eight, no, 20 stores a year? So in the first year, we had three stores. The second year, we didn't open none. And then the third year, we opened a few. And then the fourth year, which was 2022, we opened 48 shops in a year. So pretty much one a week. And then last year, 2023, we opened 35 stores. And then this year, what we're like less than a month in, we've opened three stores. So hopefully we do about 35 this year. This video is sponsored by Cranbrook Law, an award-winning immigration law firm. Their talented solicitors can help when 
any struggles arise regarding immigration law. They can help get you the visas they need. They can help get you the staff you need from any other countries. As you can see, the website is on the screen right now. So if you need anything to do with immigration law, message Cranbrook Law and let them help you. Whether you're looking to obtain a sponsor license, receive advice and guidance in relation to compliance and our civil penalties, or take advantage of our know-how and experience across a broad range of business visas, our talented and dynamic immigration lawyers are available to speak to you. Telephone numbers on the screen, emails on the screen, and hit the link in the bio if you need any help. So when you were stood behind that counter, mm. you stood there, you're serving your first pizzas, and I'm guessing, what was it like from day one? Busy? Yeah, it was good. We had a good, um, obviously, the first week I had all my friends there, family and that, but then it had a good, um, what's the word, a good response from like the local people. So where did your eyes open and think, I can actually turn this into a massive pizza chain? Probably when one of the customers came in, regular customers, and he said um, him and his son were looking to start a business. So would we be interested in letting them do like a franchise? So I said, yeah, do it. And he done it about 20 minutes down the road in Streatham. And um, his shop was busier than mine. That must have pissed yeah, you off yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, I was happy for him. I was happy for him. And then we opened another one in Croydon, Fort Neath. Um, so in the end of the first year, we have three stores. But probably when back to your question, um, probably at that point when someone said, you know, can we basically copy your brand? That's when I kind of thought, you know, maybe we got something here. Are all them stores still around now? Yeah, yeah. We've closed down in the last six and a half years. We closed down five stores. That's good. Yeah, three of them because they were just doing a bad job, um, which is the issue with franchising. And then the other two had issues with the partners. They had partners between them and they just split up. So they sold the shop, closed the shop. So what made you want to go down the route of starting your own business and not just working like a normal nine to five? Because being your own boss, there's a lot of stress with it as well. Mm -mm, it's not yeah. as easy as everyone no, thinks. No, no, definitely not. Um, just because I working in Nando's and getting a feel from like being told to put your hat on and these kind of things. I, that hat really pissed you <laughs> off, didn't it? <laughs> I got it at my house still, you know, I still got it at my house. Um, just from not just from kind of wanting to do my own thing waking up at my own time going to sleep at my own you know at my own choice and just working whenever i want and going on holiday whenever i want ironically now i ain't got time to sleep you know i have to wake up mad early and i can hardly go on holiday unless it's to do with business so i kind of intertwine them together but um it's pretty much the exact opposite as because everyone says when you become your own boss you forget about holidays yeah forget about waking up when you want it, it don't happen no more i think um obviously having your own business and being an entrepreneur is great but i think um a nine to five employee job is very underestimated underestimated you know because there's a lot a lot of less stress and you can you know you know you go in you do your job and you go you know if the building burns down <laughs> overnight it's not your business you know you get another you get another job so i think having a job is um, very underestimated and obviously i wouldn't change my situation um but i can see why why a lot of people would because sometimes you think you know what's the point um all this stress is it even worth it was there any points in your life where you thought you know what this is too much yeah especially in the beginning even now sometimes but especially in the beginning when you know you haven't got money to pay people to do the job so you've got to do everything yourself and you're the driver the manager and i can remember a few times like on a friday saturday night when all my friends were out clubbing and i'm like delivering pizza yeah. and i remember one time customers calling complaining one of the drivers was ill so i was doing like twice the amount of work speed into some house to deliver them pizza got flashed at a camera for speeding like the milkshake went everywhere in the car trust me a few times it was just yeah the, you have to go through those, those um those points i think and i think whether you give up at those points or continue is a response to how much you actually want what you say you want i have a question you've opened 150 plus stores out of all of them what would you say has been the hardest one to open oh that's a good question Mm, my marketing guy is there as well. He he's got a hard job marketing <laughs> certain stores, probably somewhere in the middle of nowhere in Scotland, probably because we've got stores in Scotland, we've got stores in Cornwall, so middle of nowhere ones. What? Why? What makes it hard? Just um, do you just, see it as a challenge opening one there? Just getting there and then marketing because obviously it's in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? But saying that sometimes the stores like smack bang in the middle of like the town centre can also be. Um, can also be difficult 
So I don't think there's any one that stands out, but there's been a few difficult What's been ones. Your favorite store to open. Favorite one, probably my own one, and then the highest performing one is in Bristol. Really? Yeah. So we got a really good um, franchisee, ex Domino's, and he's got three stores with us, and um, his store's doing about twenty seven thousand pounds a week in sales, and it's not even like in the town centre. So. And what is the process of someone franchising a store with yourself? So. They have to pay, obviously, first. Of course, but let's yeah. say, let's put it for the viewers watching. You never know, someone might yeah, be interested. Yeah. So f- I'm Mikey. I want to franchise right. a store. What so do I do? Okay, so first you pay a deposit. Um, the total amount normally for a shop on average is about 150k. Okay. Depending on how big it is and that, but 150k. So they normally pay like a small deposit just to actually show that they're serious. And then they find a shop. And then once they find a shop, we send someone to go and look at it to make sure that it's you know suitable. And then if it's suitable, they pay the rest of the money. We send the builders in. We do the full kit out, signage, equipment. And normally within four weeks, they're ready to open. So you lot take care of literally everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like a turn, turnkey operation. Yeah. Do you enjoy that side of the business? Yeah. I, I think more. I think me personally, creative-wise, I, pref- I, I enjoy more like marketing, getting involved with marketing or designing or products and product testing and and those kind of things but setting up new stores and opening new stores and going to places you know i've been to places that i never would have gone to if it weren't for opening you know i would have never gone to the middle of aberdeen in scotland i would never have gone to like cornwall and devon i might have gone like once but i wouldn't have gone to like these small do, little do towns you know what it is? do you know why i ask i'll tell you the truth you sit opposite me and you're very successful mm. yeah let's not beat around a bush mm. you've done you've done well very well and you're not old you're a young man mm. But you're so relaxed. You're yeah. so chilled. You're laid back. Very rarely. <laughs> but, just, but you are. You're, you're sat here. For someone who's changed their life around in six years, because mm. you have, you've gone from, like you said, just yeah. chilling to right now you're, you're flying. Maybe because it's happened so quick that it doesn't, um, what's the word? It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sink in as much as it would over a long, long, long period of time. My brother, you pulled up in a Rolls Royce. Mm. Yeah you've got a beautiful watch on your wrist mm. you're doing well yeah no I can't complain <laughs> you're, just, you're so it's so relaxed and so we got, chilled I think we've got a lot to do though because if it had been if it if this was like the end of the road and then I told, I told you like next week I'm selling the business yeah, it's then it's different but because I know that we we're kind of just getting started and if you look at the competition obviously I don't want to mention any names but the big big pizza players in, in the UK the only like, pizza place I know is Fireway bro yeah there you go oh, no, we're doing a good job then the marketing guy's doing a good job um, but no they've got like if you're talking about number one pizza brand in the UK they've got 1,200 stores they've been around since 1985 in the UK so if, if they've got 1,200 stores and we've got 150 there's still yes. a lot of work to do you know let's be honest you go to certain places if you ask them have you heard of Fireway they'll say no so that means we still got a lot of work to do and how large do you want to grow Fireway? I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, we, if they've got 1,200 stores, we're going to get 2,000. I'm, You know, being realistic, I think we can get to four, 500 stores. Over what time span? In the next maybe six, seven years. Yeah. If we can do that, I'll be happy. You know, I'll be more than happy. I'll probably be more stressed, but I'll be more than happy. What does your day consist of, being a big boss? Um, I wake up about, I'm not going to say I wake up at five or six because I don't. I wake up at about eight and i'm out the door by half eight and i'm in the office by our office is about hour and a half away from my house oh for real in milton Keynes. yeah we've got a distribution center so it has to be in the middle of the country so that it can get to all the stores yeah. so i get to this to the office probably about 10 o'clock i go in four times a week the other day i'm probably on the road working um i've got a guy that drives me to the office so i can do work because in traffic like to milton what, Keynes. what do you do Meeting new people. Sure you've got you've got a team that take care of most of your things. Yeah, we got a, it's a small team though. Compared to the competition, it's a very small team, um, but it's a strong team. So I just kind of oversee them, meet new people, potential franchisees, investors, um, international master franchisees to try and <clears throat> help it um, help it take off abroad. Um, suppliers testing products. That's enough, really. Have you got any stores abroad at the minute? Yeah, we got one in Amsterdam, opened a year ago. We How's got, that 
it's doing good but it's a new country so no one's heard of it so it's going to take time it's yeah. difficult but it's been there for a year it's doing all right um we've got a store under construction in portugal and one in turkey the builders are in both of them right now so they'll be ready in about three weeks um and then We've just signed a lease on a shop in Dubai. Guys, have you been thinking of move to Dubai? I've partnered up with Cranbrook Legal to make your experience so much easier. Literally, I got the main man from Cranbrook Legal right now to tell you how easy it is. Guys, it's as simple as picking up the phone, giving us a call and letting us get on with the business. What, literally one phone call? Literally one phone call, a few documents and we're there. And then I just get up, fly to Dubai, and I ain't got to pay tax no more. Yeah, but you can come and see us. We'll take you out for a meal, show you Dubai, and then it's all up to you after that. Bro, where do I sign now? Dubai, yeah? Yeah. Well, you're from Turkey, right? Turkey, yeah. Yeah, yeah so Istanbul. Nice. Yeah. nice. So it's going to be busy. Istanbul's yeah. busy. Yeah, right next to KFC. I don't know the exact name of the town, but it's it's a it's a good spot. Do you reckon that'll do well? I think so. Obviously, we have to tweak the menu. We have to make some changes. We have to do a lot of marketing because definitely no one's heard or very little people yeah. have heard of it. So it's all. Um, and Dubai. What made you want to put one in Dubai? Just an excuse for a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> you, nah. you love Dubai. I always see that on your socials. You're always in Dubai. To be honest, I weren't really a fan when I worked, first went over there. But then as I went back a couple of times, I realised maybe not to live for me personally, but as a as a business, as an, like an entrepreneurial country and a business country, there's no one I don't think that beats it. The service, the quality of everything yeah. is 10 out of 10. If it ain't 10 out of 10, it's no point even opening there. No, I agree with that. It's, it's mad. Sure. Dubai's mm. customer service is unreal. Isn't it? You can't beat it. You can't beat it. I agree. What would you say makes your company different? Why have you lot grown so fast? I think it's a mixture of things. I think the branding has to be good. I think it has to be reasonably priced. I think the product has to be different i mean if you look at the other pizza brands in the uk not the italian restaurants but like the you know the big fast food if you had all the pizzas in front of you i don't think you could tell the difference because they all look the same they're all like thick american style cooked in an electric oven you know the service is good because they get to your door within like half an hour i'm not going to dispute that you know credit where it's due um the service of some of these big companies is 10 out of 10 but the quality of the product i think our one is you know, a lot better and authentic. All the flour comes from Italy, the tomato comes from Italy. So, yeah, we try to keep that um, authenticity. So, look, bro, you started a business. You had no, there was, it was never an idea to start a fire, a fireway pizza shop. Mm -hmm. Why do you reckon the younger generations don't start businesses? I think a number of reasons, but why people don't start businesses? Probably, apart from being scared which a lot of people are which is you know understandable i think a lot of people don't want to be seen as amateur i don't think they want to be seen as like starting off as a small fish everything and not just in business in terms of anything in terms of like podcasts obviously everyone's got to start somewhere and for certain people telling their friends and family and people around them i've started this you know they want to go from zero to like a million pound a year overnight. within like yeah overnight which is, you know, very rarely the case. So I think people don't want to be seen to be struggling. They don't want to be seen to be starting off. And I think that's what stops a lot of people. But I think you need to be, you need to struggle. You need to be an amateur to prove to yourself that, you know, you want it. Cause, what yeah. advice would you give to them people? I'd say just start and, and don't worry about it. Because I spent a couple of years just I'm in an R in and thinking, should I do this? Should I do that? And then you realise down the line that those years or time that you wasted could have been used to just pushing the business so if i had started like two years earlier you know god knows where we'd be now we'd be two years ahead yeah it's true but listen everyone has a time and place you can't yeah you can't back. yeah you can't do it because someone tells you to do it like even me with my mum telling me to stop smoking <laughs> no matter how much she told me i was still smoking have you stopped now yeah I stopped. Okay, good. yeah you don't get nothing done man it's, it's, it's good for stress don't get me wrong it's helped me a lot a certain times smoking but in the long term, you know, when you're ready to do something, you'll do it. And um, yeah, I think it's good to have a clear head as well if you're in business. Your marketing man could probably answer this question better, but I'm going to ask you it. What do you think one of your attributes that make you have one of the most successful pizza brands? What is it about you that's pushed it to be where it is today? That's a good question. Um, just come in with a unique kind of look at things 
because it doesn't have to be a complicated product. Same like it doesn't have to be a complicated podcast. It can be something simple, but as long as you add a twist to it or add some sort of different way of looking at it, something that stands out from the competition, I think that looking back at it is probably uh, some sort of talent. You know? And what would you say your your unique twist of pizza is? I think the branding, the fact that we use like a fire oven, the fact that you can build your own pizza with unlimited toppings, the yeah. fact that it's still authentic. You know, we can get cheap stuff from any cash and carry, but we decide to bring stuff from Italy. Um, I think all those things, plus with the way that you market the brand as well, which comes uh, down to marketing a lot as well. So, um, yeah, I think there's a few different attributes, but it doesn't have to be nothing amazing or crazy, just small little things, you know. So what would you value Fireway Pizza at now? Last week, we sold 2.5% of the company for half a million. So that values it at just over 20 million. But that's what it's valued at now. But if someone was to make me an offer, it would need to be a lot more than that because, as I said, we're just getting started. So What price tag would you accept for it? You're going to make an offer. <laughs> no, I, I, ain't got, I ain't got 100 million right now. Bringing no. the Turkish investors from back home. <laughs> um, it would need to be... For me to walk away and forget about the whole future, the whole international Would 50 million buy it right now? Yeah, 50 would. Yeah, 50 million is 50 million. I'll give, you a, com- you- I'll give you a commission as well. And what would you do? Something else. Because you're, you're going to sell the brand eventually, right? Yeah. That's the goal. I'd always want to keep maybe a small slice of it, like maybe 5%, just to say that I've still got it. But what would I do? Definitely something else. I'm, I've got, I haven't got ADHD, but I feel like <laughs> it. I can't, fo- I can't sit down. I'm surprised I'm sitting here, to be honest. I can't, um, I wouldn't be able to just go and sit on a beach for like the rest of my life. No way. I'd have to do something. I've got a lot of ideas, but it's just finding the time. There's not enough time in a day. Have you got any other businesses on the go at the minute or is it just far away? Apart from using some of the money to buy some property there's no actual businesses businesses no you starting anymore not while i've got this to be honest the full focus i don't even have time to sleep let alone you know start and have a business but i've got a few ideas but i think yeah right now it's just too much going on what's the what's the next five year plan for fireway if we can get to like i said 400 stores um we've sold the master franchise rights for a few countries, no shops there yet, but we've sold the rights. So India, Australia, New Zealand, Spain, and some other countries. So, you know, if even one of those countries take off the same way that it's taken off here, you're talking like, you know... Doubling and tripling yeah, value. Mad, yeah, All right, that's Fireway's five-year goals. What's yeah. your five-year goals? My five-year goals... I get a lot of... Que- I get a lot of... Um, questions recently if i can like help advise support invest in in other people's businesses so hopefully in the next few years if i can step back a little bit from fire away um get a bigger team to like run it and if i can step back a little bit then you know i'd be happy to kind of look into other people's businesses and help and support potentially like help them franchise because i do enjoy it you know otherwise i wouldn't do it so it, 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 it excites me to you know see different business ideas speak to different ceos and founders so um maybe something to do with helping other people you had any backlash from the competition yeah we um we sent a tank an army tank for tank yes through central london uh to deliver pizza to domino's and um you lot are taking a piss yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta send me that clip my um my guy dmo delivered it um, he sent you sent an army tank to deliver it to Domino's. Yeah, DMO delivered it to them, and uh, yeah, the guy in the uh, it was in central London, isn't it? in Holborn. The guy um, who was working at the shop at the time, it, they, the whole all the staff were like looking, "What's that tank?" They thought they were under, a, they thought they were going to war. Like the tank pulled up outside their shop, and um, DMO handed him the pizza, and the guy took it, and then he realized it was a fiery pizza. He tried to give it back, but by that time it was too late, and the clip was there. The clip was there, and um, yeah, we got like a legal letter from them. So you actually got a legal letter, yeah, yeah. because we posted it on our. We basically were like Flood promoting it on, yeah, but we had to delete it. But by that time, it was too late. Whose idea was that? That was mine. But you just thought, yeah, enough. These lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the tank through Central. Yeah, because when I saw the tank. Um, it's like some ex-army guy. He's got a, a field in Milton Keynes, like 100 tanks, and you can go there for like stag dudes, crush cars. And I thought if we send that through central London, that would be mad. How much did that stunt cost you? Probably about 
probably about 10, 10 grand. Worth every penny? Yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Have you got any other mental ideas like that upcoming? Um, when we were opening the Holloway shop, we um, when the builders were in there, in the, in the front section of the window, there was a massive coming soon um, poster on the front of the shop, so you couldn't see inside the shop. Um, so I thought it would be a good idea to remove a little bit of the sticker so that people can see into the shop and then put a whole load of basil plants with like lights to make it look like there was a grow going on. I swear to God. And we done that and that went viral and um, the police ended up coming. It was mad. Well, we called the police, but yeah, it was mad. The, where, was the, where was the fireway advertisement for that? That was that that went um, viral on all the um, social media. So the sign was up. It said oh, it said fireway. Yeah, okay, yeah, it okay, said okay, coming okay. soon. Okay. And then when we ripped open, because we used fresh basil on the pizza, so it kind of made sense to yeah. just put a load of basil plants in the shop with some lights and people just, you know, assumed that someone was growing weed. In and it. when you're doing this, what does your team say when you come up with these ideas? You walk nah, into your team, look. guys, we're making a weed grow. <laughs> <laughs> we're making a weed grow. Most of the time they, they agree. Sometimes, obviously, they don't. And I think sometimes it's right that we don't do certain things, you know. What's been some... your most stupid idea? Oh, there's been a few, you know. That's a, that's a good question. There's been a few. Um, there's been a few. Oh yeah, another well, once we actually went ahead, I didn't really consult anyone else, but um, we were opening a shop in Beckenham, and we we put coming soon on the window, and it used to be a hair shop, hair salon, and um, we thought it'd be funny to take off the hair salon sign, and put a um, Papa John's, I think it was Papa John's, Papa John's sign up there to make it look like we'd taken over Papa John's. Since then, we have actually taken over Papa John's and turned them into fireways. We ch we've changed subways into fireways. We've changed Pizza Go-Go -Go or Pizza Hut into fireways. We never changed the Domino's into a fireways, but um, yeah, we thought it'd be funny to do that. And uh, yeah, that received a bit of backlash. You're just having fun with it though, right? At the end you've got to be creative. You've got, like I said, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And if you can have fun at the same time as, you know, promoting your brand, that's why marketing, I think, uh, I do enjoy getting involved in. Um, I think that's the most important part of it as well. 100%. And people sometimes say you've taken things too far. I think when you take it too far, that's when it works. Yeah, yeah. They you say have any, to. Any press is good press. But um, but yeah, we've done all right. We've done all right. No, listen, you, the brand itself has blown up. Everyone I speak to about it knows it. Even the other day when, by the way, use code blue tick, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah? But the other day when I released that, you lot of my sponsors... Someone messaged me and was like, what? you got Fireway to sponsor you. So clearly the brand's doing well. Mm -mm. It's a big brand. It's doing well. And it's good to, if we can get involved in other people's businesses and collab with them and sponsor them and it makes sense, you know, instead of going to the massive, well-established brands, if we can, you know, help other brands come up, then why not? Do you know what it is as well? I think because you're young as well, I think people look at you as different as a CEO. Mm -hmm. Whereas with all these other brands, I don't think there's an owner anymore. It's all by shares mm -hmm. and all of that. Whereas... Mm -hmm. You're still the face of the brand. Yeah. Everyone knows you as the owner. That can be a good and bad thing, especially like if you're dealing with people on the same level of, as you, then obviously that's good, like yeah. young people. But then when you go to these old established brands and then they look at you as some young, they, you know, obviously they, certain people will automatically think, oh, he hasn't got the experience yeah. <clears throat> or he doesn't know what he's talking about. Have you ever had any issues with people who have judged you like that? Mm, maybe with just staff that we got rid of. Rid of. Normally, like older than well, most of the staff are older than you, older than me. Well, some of them are older, not, not older than, but maybe it's just that kind of natural habit that you assume that if you're older than someone, that you know more than them. Well, no, listen, they uh, clearly they can't say that because they're working for you. Mm. But you, you've done well, you have done well, and I think Fireway's only going to grow, it can only grow. Mm. Yeah, we hope so. Touch wood. One thing I want you to do is give a message to the youngers out there, all the youth. They're out mm. there. They're looking at you thinking, how has this man done it in the last six years? What bit of advice would you give them if they were to start a business? Just accept the fact that you don't know everything and you have to know when to shut up and listen and just take on advice because I know people that, you know, they think they know everything and they never end up learning anything. And especially in business, there's so many different aspects of the business of starting a business that I never even knew about that even today that I still don't know about but there's so many that just come out of the pipe work like legal issues tax issues distribution and logistics trademark and uh, copyright 
so many different things and it's not possible for one person to know everything about all of those things you need to understand and realize that you don't know everything and you need a good team around you and you need to put your trust in people in their own ex their own um, area of expertise and that's it basically just shut up and listen sometimes obviously not all the time you have to make decisions yourself but you need to you just need to understand that do you ever listen to anyone no no i do i do i do i do i, do. I think you have to you know i do i do i mean i've got a finance guy that you know i know nothing about finance i know how to sell products and make money but in terms of like all the tax and that know nothing about obviously the legal things you can study for years and still yeah. not know everything about the laws and regulations um marketing is like an art in itself and even negotiating like i thought i was a good negotiator but we got a guy at the office um his name's anis he does all like the distribution supplies and this guy can negotiate like serious that good? the clothes off your back yeah trust me like even if you take him out in it took him out to westfields to get a suit and he's he's well, he's negotiating <laughs> with the guy behind the counter it's like it's not it's not a market you where, pay the price where, where's he from what's his background? algeria well, listen. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy though but you know he's a good guy i've got a good team good team really good team um, i'm thankful i've got a good team small team and we need to bring on more people which is what this um investment will do but uh, a really strong team definitely How many of you are there? so we've got eight drivers eight guys packing in the warehouse and then in the actual like head office upstairs um about 11 is that it it's yeah. not big at all no we've got an accountant um we've got a designer we've got a couple of admin we've got a um, couple of marketing we've got a head chef we've got an ops manager we've got the distribution guy it's about 11. yeah oh, that's mad listen you smashed it my bro thank i don't you, think bro. there's much more else for us to say thank you for coming on the show no thank you for it's having been a me. pleasure having you now all we got to do is go have a pizza, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, guys, do it. make sure you like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.